Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am making a card for the current mood board by Butterfly Reflection Ink which is just gorgeous. I'm using my snowman stamp set by Hello Bluebird which I also got recently uh, together with the others that I already showed you. Um, I'm doing some no line coloring today. I know, no line coloring with Copic markers. I have been trying it out this month um, and I already showed you some videos. Uh, it's a challenge for me. Um, I don't think that it's it's bad. I actually am really surprised by the outcome of my attempts to do no line coloring with Copic markers. Um, but there are a few things that I can tell you oh, how I got to this. Of course, I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing uh, how it works for me and what I experience as being maybe handy to know uh, when you're tackling this. First of all, I'm using ink on three. Fade out no line coloring detail ink. I got this ink right in the beginning when no line coloring started, I think. If I'm not wrong, that Ink on 3 was the first. Uh, so I just bought that one at that moment and it's still working after all this time, which I truly love. Um, it's a great ink. Uh, I don't use it when I'm doing no line coloring with distress inks because I prefer then to keep it to distress inks. Um, but for Copic markers, I really like this. Of course, there are other brands that also brought out the no line coloring ink by now. Um, I haven't tried those out because I like this one. So I don't know why I would buy some more inks with the same result maybe if I have a good one. So ink on three for me. Then next um, I'm using this stem set because I really wanted it to. Uh, it's a new one of course. It came a bit late but then again I'm in Europe. Um, if you're in America then you will get things much easier and quicker hopefully. Um, but yeah, we Europeans most of the time have to wait a bit longer. That has nothing to do with company necessarily, uh, but just with the specific um, transportation company that they are using. And uh, this one comes with USPS, I think. Well, that takes a while. Like my second order that I placed on Black Friday is still stuck in America and... It's just annoying, but that's that's just the delivery company, so always happening. Um, but then again, so this arrived. So happy dance, happy dance, and I will also be so happy when the other order arrives, of course. Um, so I can wait, you know, for these images by Hello Bluebird, I can wait. Um, so I have this snowman, yes, we are already past Christmas, but then again, Winter is until March, so there is still so much time to share snowmen. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. And then for the no line coloring, I think it's really important when you start. And that's definitely something that I searched for uh, in these images by Hello Bluebird that I got, is to find simple images. Um, if you're an expert on no line coloring or Copic markers, you probably don't need the simple ones, but I'm not an expert. Um, so I prefer uh, when I try the no line coloring to have simple ones. What do I mean? It's not that there cannot be mittens like here, uh, but these uh, surfaces that you need to color are quite large each time. Um, and then the details that they have aren't like petite. They aren't like truly as small as like a tiny bow with with this uh, a tiny bow can be really difficult. Um, normally, I will share a card like that in the future, and you will see that the tiny bow was just a bit too high for me. Uh, the level of difficulty, um, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, but here, for example, uh, the mittens they are quite big. Again, you have enough uh, space to add shadow. Uh, and to create dimension. Uh, this had simple forms, uh, but again, super cute, so that's truly handy. The snowman itself, there are large uh, surfaces to just do that uh, color that you want to do the snow in. Uh, so that's all what I'm looking for. Also the dog and the cat, they are smaller and they have like um, 
I don't know, a, a color, uh, a band. I don't know how you say it in English, but you know what I mean. Um, so that's a tiny detail on those images. But then again, it's simple because it's just, there are two lines and you just need to fill it in. Um, the cat, yeah, there is a tail, but it's as hard as when there are lines that you have to go into the tiny detail. So I'm not considering that as more difficult. And then um, something else that I would say, no line coloring. Normally with Copic markers, I go for the whole area to be immediately colored in. But you probably saw me doing it with the snowman itself, with the body of the snowman. Do it in specific parts. Uh, what do I mean with that? Uh, just you need to be able to create a dimension, create a shadow that you want. Um, if you would be filling everything in uh, without uh, doing specific parts separately, then you might uh, lose the lines or the specific idea of the stamp. Um, so I just do it in parts. If I have a bigger image also with the animals, you will see I will not like go crazy and think that I can color everything immediately. I will split it up in parts and make sure that I get the dimension that I need. If you, for example, wouldn't have certain markers or you cannot get the transition right or anything and you have some pencils at home, uh, any pencil you have that matches with the colors that you're using on your images, you can always later on use your pencils to create more depth, create a better transition, create more dimension. Uh, anything you need can be added also with pencils. Also, I'm not an expert on that. And I'm not going to use pencils today because I thought that these images were just good as they were without adding any, any pencils. But there are uh, videos that I'm making with no line coloring with Copic markers where I definitely think that adding a bit of pencils for myself could be an added value. And then you just add that and you are also good to go. Okay, so you can help yourself in different ways to create the dimension that you want to. And then another thing, normally with Copic markers, I find that I can color really quickly. When I'm doing no line coloring, that's not the case at all. I'm really, really going slow. Also taking the time to trace those edges with the specific marker that I want to. And then I continue with the rest of the image. Um, it sometimes goes really slow. Also, because you're creating your own edges, if you have an unsteady hand that day or just have some difficulties, it can be a lot to ask your body um, it's for me the same with um, with the stress inks when I'm doing no line coloring or just painting in general. There are days where I don't have a steady hand. And then I just have to acknowledge that and come back another day. So <laughs> there are a lot of you that are really sweet and always saying, you have such a steady hand. Well, if, I'm, if I don't have it that day, I'm, I'm lucky to have indeed days where my and it's just my best friend, like steady and good to go uh, with everything that I want to do. Uh, but if it's not like that, then I stop filming. So you don't see me having a shaking hand normally because I try to acknowledge it as quick as possible to not get frustrated because I definitely think that no line coloring with Copic markers is like an extra level. Some people don't really like it. Uh, I do prefer the no line coloring end result, but I cannot do no line coloring on every image that I that I have in my stamp <laughs> collection. Uh, no, I'm not that good. Uh, but I really, really, it's like the easy images. I, I really search for them. Um, so here I'm doing the kitten and you just saw me, I'm, I'm adding the shadows, I'm going over it to create more depth. Um, that's just how it is working for me right now. Also, this paper is a transotype perfect coloring paper. I don't think I would do no line coloring on Nina. I love Nina, I love ink blending on it, I um, also like copy coloring on it, but I have 
notice that I add lots and lots of layers when I'm doing no line coloring. Also to get that dimension going. Sometimes I, I choose three colors to combine and then with a certain part of the image I need even a darker one to really get uh, the perfect dimension. Um, and that's most of the time asked for me to go over everything again with another layer. And that's where it, it can get tricky with Nina that you get some bleeding. So I am not trying this out on Nina, even not trying it, because I already have bleeding when I just have my <laughs> black outline. I'm not going to put all the effort in it to get the no line coloring going and then have bleeding. So that's just what I had to say about that. Um, also here the dog. I'm trying to first add the shadow parts. But I will leave the foot as it is, like the paw, uh, because I have to add some more dimension there. So I'm just really easily going slowly over the rest. By the way, this coloring is sped up like I think 400% uh, or even more. So just so you know, um, the coloring today is taking a bigger part. I cannot skip it even more because then it would just be flashes uh, for you so then you would have nothing um, to see and maybe learn something from it or just uh, enjoy the coloring of course uh, so that's why I have it at this speed but it's really <laughs> in reality it's really really slow and these are three images so you can imagine it took me a while to get this card done but it was worth it uh, but just this isn't going as fast in reality, okay? So really, really take your time. Just enjoy it. Try to make it a relaxing experience, although you can get frustrated. Uh, I had it with specific images, definitely. Um, but just take your time and try to make it a zen moment. Those were definitely things that I wanted to tell you. Um, so really, if you give this a go, uh, Take your time and try to enjoy it, okay? And don't be too harsh on yourself. Um, this really is a challenge. And if you even try, you should be proud on whatever you end up with. Because it's going to be gorgeous in its own way. And you know you can always keep it. And then you try again. And then you can see your progress. And I also notice about when I'm doing this that... Sometimes I'm saying to myself, hmm, I should have done this like the last time or I should have done that differently or however. Um, but yeah, as long as you enjoy it and that's the most important thing, uh, then that's just fine and be proud on yourself. Like not everything goes as easy and who knows, this goes like really easy for you. But if you don't try it, you cannot know it. So, uh, but definitely this uh, is something that I want to keep trying out. Um, yeah, so I think you probably will see this more and more on my YouTube channel. But again, I cannot do this on all the images, uh, really detailed ones. Like for example, the Coffee Friends uh, that Hello Bluebird came out with that I used on my previous Hello Bluebird card. Uh, that would not be an option for me. Just to be really clear about that, those are just too detailed, too tiny images, um, way too much details. Uh, it's gorgeous, but it's not an option for me to do no line coloring. Maybe, well, I can do it no line coloring with distressings, but not with Copic markers. <laughs> and here I have three hearts, I'm just doing it in my pink. By the way, the pink and the blue and then the mindish lightish blue is for the color palette. And then I will also use some rose gold uh, later on. But to match my uh, pink accessories, uh, I decided to do the top of my background with Victorian Velvet, one of my favorite Distress Ink colors also, so that's handy. Um, and this background is the snowy sky scene by Hello Bluebird. Uh, which is an adorable scene um, when you die cut it you have two snowy hills and then you get this amazing sky with some snowdrops as well as some stars 
And then for the snowy hills, I decided to just use the same markers as I did on the snowman, just to keep everything matching. Of course, I could also have used some distress inks, uh, but specifically to get this um, color, I just wasn't sure whether, for example, cracked pistachio would work. I think it's slightly off. Uh, so just to be to be sure about how uh, the snow was going to match with the snowman, I just took the same. And I'm glad that I did. Uh, but I'm just adding a bit of shadow on the bottom, then on the edges, and I will slightly add a bit of color on the upper edge as well. And from the edges, I'm just flicking. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm doing, nothing fancy. And then on the bottom, where I have a bigger shadow as well, I'm just trying to blend it out. And I will do exactly the same on the a bottom snowy hill as well and then I have all my pieces for the background just flicking also doing backgrounds with Copic markers I did it a few times in the past nothing fancy again just <laughs> just getting a blend going uh, there are also people who can make like those amazing trees and uh, even like houses and hills on their own never doing that uh, at this stage uh, I'm just coloring things in or just getting just a blend between my markers that's as far as it goes so far I think for such backgrounds I really should be doing maybe a class but I've never done that so it's a bit I'm just I don't know how it all works uh, so I'm just avoiding that currently um, so here I have my hill and I'm just testing it out with my sky each time and since it worked I am going to do the same on this one. So exactly the same colors, everything will match with each other and flicking on the edges. And then going back and forth between the colors that's like the secret in my opinion, <laughs> flicking and going back and forth. So also this paper, because I am doing this Copic coloring on the hills, I have also cut it out from Transotype, perfect coloring paper. Not that I can have any bleeding here, uh, <laughs> but then again, it's the same white. Um, I have die cut the images using the matching die, so you have this amazing white border around your images and I truly truly love that white border I would just I would love to not need to buy dyes um, but I cannot miss the white border I cannot so in this background dye there is also let it snow which is also a sentiment from the stamp set itself but it's written a bit differently um, and I wanted to use this amazing mirror card, this is from Tonic Studios and it's the Burnished Rose. Um, if you check out uh, the blog post by Butterfly Reflection Inc or also mine, I have added the uh, mood board on there with also the link towards Butterfly Reflection. Um, you can see that there is a light blue, then a light pink, then a sort of a goldish pink uh, and also dark blue. So I have all these things, but in my opinion, I sort of switched. Uh, the light pink actually is the goldish pink uh, for my card, and then the goldish pink on their mood board is more my regular pink that I chose for this card, but it worked. So I got this present seal, and I forgot to use it in one of my latest cards where I needed it, uh, but here I thought about it. So I have placed my images on my card how I wanted them and then I added the present seal, press it down and all my images are now at the exact spot where I want it to be and I can later on just add it all together on there. So to add some dimension onto my background I have first added the sky with liquid glue then I used the big mama foam tape roll from Simon's stamp for my first hill which is a thinner foam tape and then for my second hill I use this Scotch 3M foam tape which is in my opinion the normal uh, size of foam tape 
So now for the sentiment, let it snow, I decided to add a bit of a shadow behind uh, a white one. This way it also matches with that white border of your images. Also the snow being partially white still um, was just a nice idea I thought. So I did that with some liquid glue and now I'm adding all my images using thin foam squares and some liquid glue. Uh, to go onto this background and then once these are all on there I will do the cat again because I want it to be a bit lifted I can add the sentiment so thin foam squares all the way of course And then for the sentiment I will just add it flat with some liquid glue. With the shadow behind it there is already a bit of dimension created so that's handy. And I am just going to first line up the snow with my T-square ruler. And then I will first uh, lay down the let it onto my grid mat to have it straight. Take some purple tape and then use my T-square ruler again with the purple tape to get the rest in place. Sorry that my head is a bit in the way. I'm slowly removing the purple tape to not ruin anything. And then I still needed my tittle. I uh, lost it. So um, it took me a while to not find it. And then I just did it again. I cut it out on, of white and also of this gold. And then I added it onto this card. On the hearts I did some glossy accents and now I'm going to add some stickles, these are the crystals, onto the details of the mittens. And here I'm adding those two titles, I love the name. <laughs> so previously I added it on the side on top of each other but I decided that I was now going to just glue it directly on my card and then I could easily um, get the shadow right because it's tiny it's a bit difficult um, placing it a bit higher to sort of match it with how it looks on the die and then this is finished so this is my participation on the current challenge with the mood board by butterfly reflection ink and I truly enjoyed making this card if you have any questions you can leave them down below in the description box. If you like this card you can always give this one a thumbs up, I would truly appreciate it and I will be back soon with a new card. Bye!